let's take a look at some information and charts on Band protocol for Brave New Coin. So Band is similar to Link in that it's a cross-chain data oracle platform trying to aggregate and standardize data between APIs and blockchains and DeFi and the real world and any other information that sort of needs to be connected seamlessly to be used on the blockchain. And really the health of band ultimately right now is dependent on the health of DeFi. When I'm, when I mean health, I mean price. Link is the same. And if um, DeFi starts to wane or gets regulated in some way by some country, right? If we're playing the game theory in our head here, then things could sour fast for DeFi, for AMM, for trading, for DEXs, for all this stuff. So it's certainly something to consider when the environment as a whole looks weak price-wise. That isn't to say Band isn't doing what it's set out to do, and there is on-chain data to support that it's doing what it's set out to do. It's a proof-of-stake network built on Tendermint. I'll get into that. So, of course, we have to look at validators. We have to look at who's staking. We have to look at inflation. All the usual suspects for proof of stake related analysis is important here. Is it decentralized? Is it split geographically in a way that makes sense? If we're just talking about regulations again, if Asia clamps down on crypto stuff, is banned going to be affected by that? All that sort of stuff. They have Pinterest on here. I think that's what that is. Uh, Ethereum. Oh, this is Polkadot. <laughs> My bad. Polkadot, Ethereum, Cosmos. So multi-chain, and that's realistically what everybody should be doing if they want to remain a competitor in the game, which is one of the reasons I'm concerned for Uniswap long-term if they can't compete with some multi-chain DEXs because I don't think they're going multi-chain anytime soon, but I could be wrong. So good on Band, good on Link for going multi-chain. If we look at some of the stuff under the hood, I'm getting discrepancies in data between Mint Scan and Cosmos Scan. Band or uh, Cosmos Scan says they have 61 nodes and X number of validators, whereas Mint Scan tells me different stuff. It tells me inflation 7%. You know, so I don't know what to believe exactly. I don't have a, a great data source for this stuff, but total requests continue to increase hasn't plateaued yet. This is Oracle requests. So if this was flatline, that would mean nobody was using Band for anything at all. And Band, the network, is clearly being used for stuff. And you can see that live stream feed here. It says they have around 90 million Band bonded, which I believe in this case means a part of the proof-of-stake network. So this tells me there's 125 active validators with 200 million bonded tokens so it, i guess it depends on how many validators you take into account how many bonded tokens you take into account as a result of the validators being taken into account it doesn't look like the cosmos scan version includes the exchange validators for whatever reason don't know why i don't see them in this list but as with anything and this is a preview for eth Nobody will care until it's a big deal, then everybody will care. But I'm telling you right now, having all of these proof-of-stake coins on exchanges is a detriment to centralization. This isn't a secret. We have Binance, Coinbase, and Kraken in the top 10, with Binance at a 7% voting stake. Now, users can always remove their coins from Binance, but as Binance has shown with other protocols, such as Wi-Fi, or the name escapes me, but the one that was taken over by Justin Sun... They will use their voting power should they capture it. They will wield it to whatever narrative or decision they see fit. So keep that in mind. Something else else to compare with these uh, validators, just like Tezos, they have variable commissions, variable payouts. So depending on how you calculate inflation, you know, based on all this, they get a cut, you get a cut. It's it's a kind of a mess to figure it all out. This site has inflation at seven percent. The other side has it at 11%. So I guess it depends <laughs> Depends what you calculate. But the first step to analyzing any of this stuff is to get solid on-chain metrics and data. And for proof-of-stake networks, you need validators, total staking, inflation, 
I'd like to see separation between uh, geographic distribution here, exchanges, you know, just give me a tab for all that. Why, why do we have to calculate this every time? You know, that's a huge quality of life improvement. If people can just see, oh, oh, there's a problem here, right? We can look at hash rate and we can see on any proof of work chain, if it's a threat for a 61% attack, why can't we do that for most of this proof of stake data? Now I could always do this myself, right? But that's besides the point. A lot of these are also um, VCs or early venture funds who were involved in some way, as is the case with many of these early DeFi incubator chains. So keep that in mind. The interests here are highly centralized for the most part and don't always necessarily jive with uh, users in a decentralized way. And again, with the validators, it says here that the top 100 validators with the most staked Tokens behind them become the chain's validators, so I don't know why this site only lists 61 and this site lists 125 of 287. You know, I don't really know what's going on here, so maybe somebody can help me out in the comments, but it doesn't really um, doesn't make sense. Overall, though, it reminds me a lot of Tezos because they have proposals that, can, that they can vote on. I can look at all the Tezos uh, staking stuff in an easy way. So I think we're moving towards that direction. People saw what happened with BTC, BCH, and BSV and all the drama with everything involved there and wanted something better, obviously. And this is a step in the right direction. I don't know if it'll turn out to be for the better, but it's certainly something different than what we've had before as far as a, a governance system. If we look at some technicals for band, now I recently cut this entirely from the Enzyme DeFi portfolio because it looked to me the most at risk for massive drawdowns. Even sitting here now, you could argue inverted Adam and Eve. You could argue bearish triangle flag situation. It's got a bearish 5200 cross here. None of this is good. None of this looks good. You know, it had this cup and handle potential. Didn't go anywhere. Got denied. Again, another M double top situation. We're getting this like M double top at the bottom, <laughs> which is not what you want to see at all. So, you know, I like band sub three bucks. I like it down here at this point two bucks. You know, this is where all the volume is, even since mid-2020, rather. And in January, it had a run, but it didn't really have the run that DeFi in general had. Another weak point for band. It had its run kind of pre-January, and based on uh, volume and yearly uh, monthly pivots, I like sub three bucks, certainly. So that looks atrocious. Um, previously, this was a bullish breakout point, and now it looks to be a bearish breakdown point. Here's the cloud, which also looks uh, bearish. Prices below the cloud, drop below the cloud early May. And the only thing that might say this is on the daily, it's starting to get this uh, TKC clamp. But you can see previously how long that took to actually fix itself and mean revert. You know, it took the entirety, basically, of this inverted head and shoulders, which was September through December to finally reverse. So I'm not a buyer here. I'm not a knife catcher here. It's not for me at this point in time, especially in view of everything DeFi generally that's looking rather weak. Volume, OI, gas prices, you know, there's just a lack of exuberance anymore in the DeFi realm. Here's Band BTC, which had a decent uh, shot, decent chance, decent shot at moving up to 85k sets basically sort of mean reverting back to the previous highs it had a two-day edge-to-edge starting and this is what the stop loss looks like for this trade not only did it break down below the cloud but it also broke below the key june which ultimately was the nail in the coffin in my opinion this also had inverted head and shoulders potential to propel this so the table was set but a breakout had no momentum, no momentum for uh, further breakthroughs as everything else basically broke down. You know, it consolidated, got ready, and didn't go. So I like 16 or lower, uh, 16K sats or lower at this point. Tons of volume, 12K sats or lower. And ultimately, if we end up going multi-year bear, we're probably talking 3 to 6K sats. You know, that's where most of the volume is here and would result in a retracement of the entirety of the run basically since 2020 and how this cloud sits you know it's clearly below the cloud support pivots all the way down here you know it doesn't look 
Doesn't look good. Band ETH as well. Again, you're seeing this TKC clamp starting to form with um, bullish divergence. The last remaining pivot support at 002, basically. Um, so this doesn't look happy either. This certainly looks quite angry. It had this chance at some sort of diamond bottom type thing. But again, everything DeFi broke down or failed to keep up with ETH and just lower it goes. So, you know, I like knife catches down here, way down here, but it's getting there as far as having tech on its side for some sort of reversal based on this multi-week bullish divergence. Lastly, I'll just mention the ETH BTC fund on Enzyme that I trade for Techemy Capital Non-Custodial Portfolio Management, where you can send or view what I'm doing here, but you can send the ETH or USDC and participate. You can see allocations, the trades I make, you can see where they happen, how much, you know, everything is completely fully transparent here. I don't have control of the funds myself. I can't remove them from the smart contract. They just stay in the smart contract. And this is the DeFi portfolio. And like I said, I cut the band position completely a few days ago and everything started to look weak. So that's all over this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe. Happy trading.